Russia is being kicked out of G20. The Chinese tried to bribe the Maldives with drinking water. Russia's card payment system Mir is getting into even more troubles. The worldwide hunt for the good Russians has begun. Erdogan loses in Turkey for the first time in 20 years. Hamas publicly congratulates Putin. And the biggest news of the week, Russia gets itself a new friend. And among bad friends that Russia has, lunatics, dictators, murderers, this could easily be the most horrendous friend. Howdy, howdy, friends. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian. Every Wednesday, I give you Russian take on important world's news. And let's jump straight to the news number one. And the first news comes from G20. Well, what is G20? The group of 20, the group of major advanced and emerging economies. Basically, G20 is the club of governments and heads of central banks of the states with the most developed and developing economies, the strongest economies and biggest powers in the world. Russia is currently a member of G20. But that's a downgrade because Russia used to be a member of G8, eight strongest countries in the world. Well, this group used to be G7, really, but then the USSR split up and Russia joined G7 meetings in 1993, so it became G7 plus one format. And in 1997, Russia was involved, uh, it was invited, officially invited, to participate as a regular member. So G7 plus one became G8 again. Um... And in 2014, after the annexation of Crimea, Russia was kicked out of the good society and G8 became G7 again. Slap in Russia's face. But despite being ousted out of G8, Russia remains to be part of G20 and attended meetings of G20. Well, not the head of the state, Putin, but he sent his minions to participate. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, recently spoke of what Vladimir Putin's participation in G20 meeting in Brazil that is coming up can be useful when there's consensus among all members. But now it's difficult to understand whether the, the participation of the Russian president is useful and how to achieve unanimity. Well, let me translate you from the diplomatic language into plain English. Antony Blinken said, Putin, get the fudge out! And it looks like uh, Russia will not be a part of G20 for much longer. Another news comes from the Maldives. Have you heard of the Maldives? It's a tiny country in the middle of the Indian Ocean. <laughs> An archipelago, um, an island country. Very popular tourist destination, uh, at least among tourists from Russia. Well, the Maldives have fallen into the sphere of uh, the interest of the Chinese, and that immediately caused a scandal. China tried to bribe the Maldives by donating 1,500 tons, metric tons, of drinking water to the island nation. 1,500 tons of drinking water. Maldives state broadcaster Public Service Media reported on March 27th that China's Zizang Tibetan Anatomous Region uh, re the province had provided the Maldives with a generous donation of 1,500 tons of drinking water, aimed at solving the problem of water shortage on the islands. However, some claimed that the China's donation was intended for the personal use of the president of the state, Mohammed Mizu. Uh, I tell you, this guy he drinks a lot. <laughs> 
<laughs> does that smell like China? You bet. You bet it does. Actually, it has China's way written all over it. The Chinese are ruthless and sly. They are bribing the Maldivians with drinking water. Just imagine what they are secretly bribing Russian politicians with. The next news comes from Armenia and Kyrgyzstan. And it is a continuation of the old news. The update, so to speak. Remember uh, Russia's bank card payment system called MIR? I've mentioned quite a few times. It was created as an alternative to American Visa and MasterCard. There are currently seven countries where MIR card, if you're lucky owner of a MIR card, of course, or wait, I'll rephrase that. If you are unlucky <laughs> owner of a MIR card, so you could travel to um, seven countries and use it. Um, and the countries are, well, for example, I'll just give, give you a few examples. Uh, you could travel to Laos and pay with MIR card in um, any one of its 17 POS terminals there. Um, you know, for the entire Laos, for the entire country. Or you could go to Cuba. I think you could use it in like 10 spots in Cuba. Hey, that's that's enough to say that uh, Mir is presented and works in Cuba, right? Or you could uh, go to another super developed country, Venezuela, and um, use your Mir card um, there. Or only in one place, though, on Margarita Island, uh, accessible to the tourists only. But hey... It doesn't matter. Venezuela is with Mir. Despite such worldwide success and amazing popularity, Mir payment system gets mm, clouds in its spotless sky. From time to time, bad news appear, so to speak. And one of the bad news came from Armenia not too long ago. A couple months ago, the Armenians announced that they were going to ditch Mir payment system, cut off all the ties with uh, Russian banks. That they're not going to do, not even get any close to Mir system. That news made it to my update here a couple months ago. Well, guess what? The Armenians have delivered. They stopped accepting Mir cards countrywide on March 30th, just a few days ago. They really ditched it. They showed that Armenia means business. Armenia, the close friend and ally. Oh, Russian propaganda isn't happy about that. They are just screaming all over it. But it gets even better. Mir payment system is getting ditched in another Russia's ally, Kyrgyzstan. Out of the blue, all of a sudden, Kyrgyzstan announced that on April 4th, which is tomorrow, um, it'll be accepting Mir cards in Kyrgyzstan for the last day. After April 4th, no more Mir in Kyrgyzstan. And I'm pretty sure that the others will follow. And this is another example of how the deadly secondary sanctions are working, slowly but surely. Well, the next news also comes from Armenia. Russians who escaped their country, their homeland, to Armenia for political reasons due to fears of prosecution have begun noticing surveillance. This is reported by Helsinki Civil Assembly Vanadzor, human rights organization. According to, to this human rights group, many Russian citizens started noticing people dressed in Russian military uniforms near their places of residences, of residence. Who, those those um, men in military uniforms, Russian military uniforms, openly harass them and seek information about who lives in apartments occupied by these people. The Helsinki Vanadzor Civic Assembly claims that not only Russians, but also Armenian citizens 
who are clearly critical of the policy of Russian authorities, have become targets of Russian surveillance. This is a logical continuation of Russian authorities threatening those who have fled Russia. We know who you are. We will find you anywhere you hide. We will bring you back to Russia and throw you to Gulag. We will kill you! And that's what they have been openly saying or suggesting in the previous months, many Russian authorities and officials. And now these threats have become the reality, at least in Armenia. Well, Armenia is the first, but who will be the next? Well, another news is about money, or frozen money to be exact. Countries sympathetic to Russia are calling on the European Union to abandon the confiscation of frozen Russian assets. Let me remind you, over 330 billion of US dollars of Russian reserves, Russia's central bank reserves, have been frozen in Europe and are being confiscated now. As it turns out, some countries have been asking for Russia you know, behind, behind the curtains, so to speak. This position was privately, notice, privately expressed by representatives of China, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia, according to um, the Politico. These three states appealed to the EU representatives to resist pressure from the United States and the Great Britain who insist on the confiscating Russia's assets. I wonder why. Don't they know that um, money, that if uh, they are unfrozen, would go to, to keep supporting the war in Ukraine? I wonder if they don't know that. Oh, they know. They know. They know everything. They understand. And they could care less. It's like China... Indonesia and Saudi Arabia fear that the confiscation of Russian state assets will set a precedent and they may be next. And that is true. They may very well be next. The next quick news comes from Turkey. Well, it's actually big news. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's huge. It's huge news. The Justice and Development Party... AKP, um, the home base of Turkish President Recep Erdogan, lost the national municipal elections. It failed to regain the posts of mayor of Istanbul uh, and Ankara, and lost several other major cities. This is the first major defeat of the AKP in more than 20 years. And it is likely that this will be the beginning of Erdogan's decline. The main reason for the party's future is the inability to solve problems in the economy and curb inflation, which has risen to whooping 70% annually. Now, I have a question for you. It looks like Erdogan's era will be ending rather sooner than later. Do you think that anything similar could happen in Russia soon? Please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I really would like to know if you think yes or not. And by the way, the news are happening now as I speak. Russia has entered the later stage of its demise and news are plenty every day. I simply can't cover all the news here. That's why I find nine news every single day that I find important and make them available to the patrons and sponsors of Inside Russia. Three posts a day, three important news that matter with my explanation and comments in every post. Nine news in total every single day. Please join Patreon at patreon.com or become sponsor here at YouTube and get your access to nine news that will make you an expert on what's happening in Russia. The next news is short and pretty... Mm, I was looking for a word. I, there's no better word I found than disgusting. The leader of Hamas, Ismail Haini, 
congratulated Vladimir Putin on his re-election as the president of Russia. And, by the way, RIA Novosti, one of uh, Russia's biggest propaganda outlets, is bragging about it. In his congratulations message, Haney said that Hamas expects to strengthen the bonds of friendship and further develop cooperation with Russia and highly appreciates Russia's position in supporting the Palestinian issue. I'm sure that Russia will do everything it can to strengthen the bond and further develop cooperation. Yes. And it's... Um, to me, it's pretty disgusting. And the last but not least, the major news comes from Afghanistan. And before I start this news, I must mention something. Sort of disclaimer. Uh, the Taliban has been officially designated by Russian government as a terrorist organization and forbidden in Russia. You see, there's a law that obliges anyone in Russia who mentions terrorist organizations to add this disclaimer uh, that the mentioned organization is officially designated as terrorist organization and is forbidden in Russia. That you, you, there's no way around it. You must do it. If you don't do it, you break the law. Well, again, Taliban, the Taliban has been officially designated by the Russian government as terrorist organization in Russia, and this is required to be added every time Taliban is mentioned anywhere in Russia. But that's not the news. The news is that <laughs> the delegation of the Taliban has been invited to participate in the forum uh, expo called Russia and the Islamic World, Kazan Forum, scheduled for this mid-May. Let me remind you who the Taliban are. They hosted Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda network when those were preparing 9-11 attacks. They are considered illegal and terrorists all over the world. After the Americans disastrously fled Afghanistan in 2021, we all remember that, the Taliban took over and, among other things, banned education for Afghan women and girls, put a strict ban on showing women's faces, their faces, um, so-called vile rule, and destroyed human rights whatever human rights remained in Afghanistan. And the latest Taliban law, created just a few days ago, on March 29th, is stoning women to death for cheating. That is required now. If a woman is caught cheating, then she is to be stoned to death. And whoever finds that a violation of women's rights is considered serving the Satan. That's who the Taliban are. So in most countries, the Taliban are outlawed, and for a very good reason, and in Russia too. There is a law recognizing the Taliban terrorists, and it's outlawed in Russia. Well, apparently not in Kazan, the capital of Tatarstan province, uh, and apparently not with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who Taliban... Uh, to them, the Taliban are not bad and not outlawed. The Taliban are invited by these folks of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Kazan Forum organizers to visit the very heart of Russia. The Taliban will freely come visit Kazan soon, in 10 days. The terrorists, the women stoners, the murderers will be freely walking around Kazan. I wonder if they will attempt to stone beautiful Tatar girls in Kazan when they'll see their beautiful faces and long, long legs because Tatar girls are very sexual and they aren't afraid to show off their sexuality. They like miniskirts and shorts and things like that. Will the Taliban attempt to stone them to death in Kazan? What's going on in Kazan is... Pretty shameful, you know. If I were to talk about it, say, two years ago, I'd cover my face like this, and I would be hurting. Hurting for my country. 
But this is 2024, not 2022. And I heard no more. Yes, it is very unpleasant. Yes, it is shameful. <sighs> but these things coming out of Russia don't make me hurt anymore for Russia. I have become comfortably numb. I have accepted the fact that Russia has turned into a mad circus ruled by evil characters straight out of Stephen King's stories. The id clowns, the jokers, the bloodsuckers from Solemn's Lord, they live! I have accepted the fact that they have killed Russia that I know, my Russia. And making friends with Taliban, <laughs> even though Russian authorities have accepted them themselves to be no good scumbags and terrorists, and at the same time making friends with the Taliban proves that my Russia, my homeland, the country that I loved, that I grew up and I lived in, is dead. And that's the lowest of all low. But something is telling me this is not the end. This is just the beginning. So let's keep our eyes open. Thank you so very much for watching. If on the way out you'd like to buy me a coffee or a tea, I'd appreciate that very much. Now please check out another video I made on how Ukrainian drones are effectively disrupting Russian economy. The link is right here.